It's been a long, dry spring in the Moffat Hills, the southern uplands of Scotland. The source of the Tweed that runs northeast to Berricon Tweed, and the Annan that falls to the south and the Solway Firth. Tony Donnelly and Pat Gray are back in Tony's old stomping ground, determined to catch stunning wild border brown trout on the dries. It's not going to be easy. The Annan is almost on its knees as the long dry spring sees the water levels at a summertime low. So I've returned to the River Annan I used to fish this when I was at college about 12 years ago. I got to know the, the upper half of the river quite well. Uh, it's common to see grayling as big as three pounds and brown trout in the four to five pounds bracket and the occasional fish gets bigger than that. Seven or eight pound fish are caught most springs on the dry fly on the Annan. Tony and Pat talk fly choice over a quick ale in Moffat before heading to the river. For a simple overview of the tackle that I'll be using for the next couple of days, I have a 9 foot 4 weight fly rod with a mid-arbor fly reel. On the fly reel I have a floating line which is specifically designed for delicate dry fly presentation. I'm then using a 9 foot tapered leader with a 5 foot tippet on the end of that, so my overall leader length is 14 feet, that's just to give me a bit of distance between the end of the fly line and the fly, just less likely to line a fish doing that, it just gives you a, a, little, bit, a little bit of distance between the, 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 the tip of the fly line and the fly. So the floating line that I'm using for, for the dry fly fishing is a Scientific Angler's Mastery Series VPT. It's a specially designed line for delicate dry fly applications. Uh, really designed for short to medium range fishing, but it is also capable of, of throwing a long line if you need to. Now there's various brands out there, Rio, Snowbee, Airflow, that all do lines that are specifically designed for dry fly applications. It's well worth spending your time doing some homework. There's a lot of good products out there now, but just spend your time looking through the different profiles of the tapers and try and find the one that suits your needs. When locating rising fish in a pool, it is essential to confidently establish the lie in which the fish is feeding. By approaching in an upstream direction low to the water, you can spot rising fish more easily. If you are to begin wading upstream without knowing where your intended targets are, it is possible you will spook a fish you didn't even know was there. In turn, the spooked fish is likely to alert the intended quarry of your presence. I like to spend a minimum of 5-10 to ten minutes watching for rising trout before making an approach. Many anglers spend a lot of time trying to pick out the, the right fly from their box when, when fishing dry flies. Um, my advice would be not to spend too long getting hung up on, on does your fly look exactly like the natural. As long as it's roughly the same size and roughly the same shade as what they're feeding on, um, place far more emphasis on being able to make the right cast. Being able to deliver your fly to the right place and ensuring a drag free drift for, for at least three or four feet before it appears into the fish's field of vision will, will usually result in the fish coming and, and, and taking the fly. Once you have located your intended target, you will need to place your dry fly at least three to four feet upstream of the trout. When faced with making your cast at a shallow angle of approach, you could run the risk of spooking the trout with the fly line. By adapting your cast, you can increase the distance between line and fish while still placing the fly in the correct position. After watching a pool for five minutes, we locate a trout rising sporadically tight to the near bank underneath some alder branches. Patrick drops into position and waits for another rise before starting to cast. By adopting a side casting technique, Patrick is able to land his fly line in the slack water on the inside of the current. However, 
His fly is still placed in the optimal position, a few feet upstream of the rising trout. His cast has reduced the likelihood of spooking the trout and assists in ensuring a drag-free drift. Targeting fickle brown trout on dry flies, your casting is the most significant factor contributing to success. Time spent practicing a variety of casting techniques and scenarios will give you the confidence to make the cast that counts. The challenging weather conditions and sporadic hatches meant Pat and Tony had to earn every fish. 
We didn't see the number of fish we'd expected for a spring dry fly session, but the fish Tony and Pat did catch were stunning examples of wild border brown trout. Thank <laughs> you.